is Mike Carnazza, Code Enforcement Officer. Um, the way we operate is we'll hear the cases when you come up. I'll swear you in, unless you're an attorney. Um, so you explain your case to us. We'll hear it. We'll go to the board if there's any questions or concerns. Um, <clears throat> then we'll close the public hearing. After all, or I'll ask for input from the public if, if any input is, is uh, necessary, and then uh, we will close the hearing. But uh, after the hearing is closed, there's no further input from the public. So keep that in mind. Um, will you all please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. All right, we have two holdover cases from last month, and the first case is number one is Milliker. And where's my cheat sheet here? Um, <clears throat> for a variation of section 156.39.5, seeking permission to retain existing chicken coop and five chickens. The property is located at 8 Brook Street, Hope Pack, New York, 10541, tax map 64.7-1-19. And you folks are, state your name and address for the record. James Milliker, 8 Brook Street, Mayapack, New York. Tina Milliker, 8 Brook Street, Mayapack, New York. All right, raise your right hand and we'll swear you in. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so we'll help you guys. Sure. Yes. Yes. Um, all right, bring us through what, uh, what brought you into us here. I guess you have... Um, you like the bed, you know. <coughs> um, Just do me a favor, one, also speaking to the microphone. Okay. It's being recorded and okay. for record. Okay. Um, well, my husband bought me chickens because I eat a lot of eggs, a lot. Kids. Well, yeah, a ton of eggs. So um, he thought it was a cute thing. He brought the little baby chicks home. We raised them in our house for a couple months. Then we put them outside, unaware of um, the uh, one-acre rule. Um, so he built a beautiful coop for them. And uh, we had a rooster, which crowed for about a couple weeks and I was looking for a home for him. So I found him a home at a farm, a real farm, as long not as he the didn't farm. Become, as long as he didn't become dinner. Then no. <laughs> and then, um, then I got the notice <laughs> probably two weeks after I got rid of Oreo. Um, and then uh, so we've been just moving, doing every step that we had to, to you know, keep them. Keep them. Right. Yeah, someone, keep them. Did someone file a complaint or was it picked up by? Not that we know of. Not that we know of. Um, I, th I think it was the rooster crow, but I don't know. I don't. No one complained to me or anything like that. My neighbors love them. Um, I say we got some letters of, of support yeah. from uh, Donna and John Capelli, and there was another one that we got the email. I didn't get a chance. Chris to print Stock. It Chris Stock. Chris Stock. Neighbor. Yeah, and my neighbor next door too. He just didn't have time. He's a firefighter in New York City. He just forgot to do it. But they like the. You know, I just. I. We, they're our pets. You know, they have names and everything. Um, my kids love them. The neighbor kids love them. Uh, and um, you keep the cage clean. You clean out. Yes, it's very There's clean. No odor issues or nope. Um, I'm up there all the time cleaning it. Yeah, well I don't let them roam either. I take them out and I hang out with them, and then I put them back in their the penned area, so they're not like running around the neighborhood. Yeah, it looks like a well constructed uh, coop. Yeah. Um, I know there's also concerns about predators, but is is the chicken wire? Like sub to yeah. Yeah. yeah, six inches or maybe a little bit more. My son and I yeah. did that before winter. Um, I, mean, I haven't seen anything. It's been good. It's super clean. It doesn't smell. It looks nice. It looks like a little house. Um, and like I said, they don't roam around, so nothing's coming around to, you know, get them. Okay, and I guess that's the issue of the, of the acreage. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll go around to the board. John, any questions? Uh, you, you've asked them all, John. <laughs> Um, I think what's unique to the situation <coughs> is that you only have what, two other houses on that road, from yeah. what I remember. Yeah. And I find that to make it much easier to make a decision on because it doesn't affect so many people. Um, when we make decision on, decisions on things like this, we have to look for the uniqueness of it. And you don't have a lot of people that are affected by it. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And how long have you had them? We got them um, the end of August. So they're about eight months old or so. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. Yeah. All right. Is there any input from the public on this application? 
in support or otherwise. All right, I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing on the application. Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second, second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Um, I failed to mention if you guys want to stick around, I mean, it might be a short meeting. You can hear your, as we adjudicate later, or you can go home and watch on channel 24 on Fios and 96 on Comcast, I think. We're planning on doing that. Which one? Watch Watching tw channel 24. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you may not make it home. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> yeah, right. Hurry up. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Um, next case tonight is Hubertus, Carrie Hubertus, for variation section 15615. Seeking permission to construct a two-car attached garage with an exercise room above. The property is located at 15 Crosby Road, Carmel, New York, 10512, and tax map 55.15-1-2. All right, I guess we have some representation. Are you all going to be speaking? No. Uh, yeah, good evening. My name is Richard Vale. I'm uh, Kara and my Roberta's architect. Okay. Just do me a favor. Just yeah, speak clearly into the microphone. Great. Um, raise, uh, state your address for the record. Uh, it's for Mooney Hill Road, Holmes, New York. And uh, raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you out. I do. Thank you. You can move that microphone if you need to, too. <coughs> okay. stated we're uh, proposing a um, an addition of a two-car garage with the exercise room above um, <coughs> it would um, it's essentially there's you can see there on this site plan um, I've uh, colored in the, uh, the the addition in the, the purple color um, you can see on the floor plan um, I've made the, uh, the section that would be um, encroaching the setback it's approximately 18 foot six by nine foot seven. Um, it's kind of triangular. So it's just that corner that's that's impeding. Right. <coughs> um, we did look at alternative options uh, to to this configuration. Um, one was uh, if we were to try to configure it uh, further, bring the driveway around and, and enter from the side. But the issue we were having was that it was very tight on backup. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also um, going to constrain us, and I, I don't know that we get like a we get a very tight two-car garage if, if that. Well, you get a nice incline there too, which is kind of tough to manipulate. Right, and that's the other Get the grade issue. that you need. And then with the um, <coughs> exercise room above, that would pop the massing above the existing roof, which was really not um, ideal when it kind of made a, a bulkier volume. So um, we came back to this idea of um, kind of, you know sinking the the garage in into the hill a bit, and then coming up so the um, exercise room is only a few steps above the main level of the house. Um, it's something similar that neighbors have um, houses that are very similar to this where you kind of come in, there's a retaining wall and uh, the garage is on the lower level and then the house is above that. So you're the, the next door neighbor and I think a few houses have a similar condition because they're also kind of on a hill like this. No, I mean, it's not a very big variance that you're seeking. And I mean, it's common for a garage to be obviously to the front portion of the house. It's typical. So, mm -hmm. but I, I compliment you on the design because it's, it's in character w with the existing design of the house. It's very, um, I don't want to say Brady Bunch, but what's that style <laughs> of architecture that? Uh, I think <coughs> it's kind of mid ranch, mid yeah. mid century modern. Midwestern <laughs> ranch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wasn't meant as an insult. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, um, I love the Brady Bunch. <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, it, I think it fits well with, with what you're looking to do here. So, I'll open it up to the board. Mark, start mm -hmm. down here. No questions. No so questions. No questions. No questions, thank you. No questions. No questions. Wow. No questions <laughs> at all. <laughs> Any input from the public on this application? So I'll just show that uh, yeah. we have a couple letters of support. Yeah, I, I'm not going to read them all, but no, there's like letters. it's the Four same letters. letters from yeah, the it's the same letter. in support for for your application, and probably for the same reasons why we all feel that there's no questions. So, okay. Um, any input from the public on this application? 
I'll ask again. All right, I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. Motion so to close. Second. Seconded by Silvio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, folks. <laughs> All right, application number three this evening is Gaetano Balzo um, for a variation of section 156.15, seeking permission to retain existing shed. Property is located at 233 Dahlia Drive, Mahopac, New York, 105401, tax map 75.12-2-57. And you folks are? I'm Gaetano Balzo. I'm Gina Franzel. And your address? 233 Dahlia Drive, Mayapak, New York. 233 Dahlia Drive, Mayapak, New York. I kind of assumed that, but okay. <laughs> Raise your right hands. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Okay. All right, bring us through what, what variance you need, because you're, it looks like it's been there. Yeah, so when we, uh, when we acquired the property, <coughs> there was an, an existing shed there. I think the, uh, the previous owner had tried to make it legal and, and never went through with it. So we, we went to, you know, take the necessary steps to make it legal. And when we uh, applied for the application, the building permit, they, you know, informed us that we need to, uh, we need to get a variance on the shed. Speak to right. Mike a little bit more. They informed us that we need to get a variance on the shed. So when we went to try to, you know, go through the legal process and, and make the shed legal, um, you know, I think we're too close to the property line or something like that. So the shed's been there for how long? Uh, I, I, I don't know the, the answer, but it's been there since before I purchased the property, and I purchased it last year. And it never got picked up on a title search or anything? Um, I mean, it's well screened and fenced, but the variances aren't, well, the, the side variance is, is the worst one, but you talk to your neighbors on either side? Yeah, uh, <coughs> one neighbor, doesn't mind at all, you know, we're, we're in uh, good communication with them and, the, and the, uh, the neighbors that are closer to the shed, uh, I don't talk too much. They, uh, they barely, you know, I actually never met them and I've been there a year. All right, we got a letter so. from Mary and Michael Vinci. Where, where are they on? They're, they're, the opposite they're side? on the opposite side. Okay. I mean, looking from, I see a little bit of moss and stuff on the roof, so it looks like it's been there for, been there for, for quite yeah. some time. But, you know, yeah. I guess shame on the title company for not picking it up. Um, <coughs> there's no other property you can buy to bring it into conformance. You're obviously landlocked there, right? So yeah, there's, there's nothing we can do about that. <coughs> as far um, as the structure is concerned, if you have any issues about it, I mean, I'm a plumber, so I have a little bit of a construction background. I mean, it's, there's no dry rot, and the wood's not rotted, the construction is sound, it's two by four construction, there's plywood, three quarter inch plywood on the floor, it's watertight, you know, I don't get any leaks in there. It's well ventilated. Yeah, no, it looks like you got some screening along the front, too. I mean, usually sheds in the front yard are kind of not looked upon favorably, but, you know, if it's been there a while and it looks like there's some good screening around it, um, I don't think you run into any problems, but we'll, we'll ask the board. Any questions, John? Uh, is there electric in, inside the shed? No, there's not. And it's just for storage. It's just, yeah, I put now I put my lawnmower and, and my snowblower in there. And, and it's pretty much, it's off the side to the driveway. So it's not like really a curb uh, appeal, you know, issue in my opinion, because you can't really see it if you're facing the house. It's yeah. on the side of the driveway. So, you know. Yeah, the way the driveway is, we kind of have the, you're looking at the house and then we kind of have a high grass with a retaining wall. So it's kind of behind the retaining wall. Mm -hmm. So you still have like the plants and the trees in front of the shed, so you don't see the full thing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's yeah. also 31 feet from the front, so yeah, it's, it's quite a pretty, distance yeah, yeah. from okay. the front. Mm. <coughs> Bill, any questions? No questions, thank you. No questions. No questions. I see that it's being blessed also, so that's yeah. No questions. Oh, Got the uh, Virgin Mary <laughs> guarding the blower. That's, that's <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> No shit. All right. Any uh, input from the public on this application? <laughs> you guys are good out there? You still awake? You still with me? <laughs> um, all right. I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. By Phil. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. I'm going to recuse myself for the next application. Phil's going to take the helm. Application number four, application of Eric and Kimberly Horowitz for a variation of section 156.15, seeking permission to obtain variance from side yard setback 
For existing boathouse, the property is located at 156 Westlake Boulevard, Mayapak, New York, 10541. It is known by tax map 64.19-1-84. Okay, who do we have here today? Uh, Jamie Spillane. Could you just speak into the mic? Jamie Spillane of Hogan and Rossi. Okay, were you doing most of the talking? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Aaron Forbes on the property owner. Okay, uh, are you an attorney? Yes. Okay, sir, can you raise your right hand? You promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, uh, let me have your name and address, please. And this, any time you talk, please talk into the mic to make it easier. Again, your name and uh, address for the record, please. Jamie Spillane, Three Star Ridge Road, Brewster, New York. Okay. What do you want to do here? So the plan here, uh, Mr. Horowitz lo owns Lot 84. essentially make this boathouse is pre-existing non-conforming and we're trying to make it less non-conforming. As you can see from the plans that were submitted and I believe that photo, two photographs were submitted as well. Yeah. Yes. So Very you can clear. see where the, um, where you see the foliage and the fence, that's the new proposed lot line. So it's just, it looks like what naturally would occur. The properties, the lots were at one point uh, lotting four, lotting five, years ago were all owned in conjunction and this the, the proposed new lot line is essentially what um, was used as a lot line for lotting before even though it wasn't the actual lot line. So what we're trying to do here is get a variance so we can go back in front of the planning board to seek a lot line adjustment. And I believe we did get a recommendation from the planning board to move forward with this project. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else you want to add? Just that the uh, the neighbors who are most affected by it are They'll be signing off on the lot line adjustment and they're completely in favor okay, of this. We didn't get any letters or anything from neighbors that I could see, just so you know. Y yes, uh, I understand. Uh, but Eric did speak to a couple of neighbors who just called him to ask him about uh, what the plan was and what was going on and they had no concern with this. This was just looking for a lot line change. Okay. Really? I own the plan years. So we just resided it and actually cut the roof off and made it lower. So we sold the lots. We went from 2,300 to 18,500 with the tax increase. That's another story. In any case, all we wanted to do, based on somebody in the town that said, if I don't do the lot line adjustment, you'd be trespassing on your neighbors 10 years ago. So all I want to do is be able to maintain the right side of the boathouse legally without trespassing and just keep the trees and the fence that have been in existence for years and give privacy to the both okay. of this landowner. All right, I'll open it up to the board. John, any questions? This uh, existing fence and uh, evergreens, did, did you install those? Yes, I did, yes. How long ago did you install them? I installed the trees about two years ago, but all this was going through with the taxes. Okay. Okay, no further questions. Rose? And there's no issue with the shed. It looks like it's three feet from the property line on the other side. There's a small shed on the left side. Is that yours? It says Eric and Kimberly Horowitz. The, the shed is, is in the of that? No, close to Westlake. Keep going. Close to Westlake. All right, over there. Yeah. That little shed. That's the stairs. Yeah, that's a tool shed. The tool shed is that has that been given a variance? How long has it been there? Because that's very close to the property line. So it looks like it's only three feet from the property line. The shed is four, I think four feet by six feet. It's just the size of a little bigger than a three foot door. Am I reading this wrong? Who said oh yes? Yeah. You're looking off of the uh, Rose is looking at the, the sideline. Uh, the property line, line to, the, uh, to the east, that would be, it looks like it's three feet from the property line.
was on the application. There, there's a retained shed with waterfront lot in 2008. That may have covered it. I oh, don't that know. probably covered that that shed. Yeah, I just noticed that on, on on the application that there was a prior appearance for this property. Okay. So that may be what it is. That may be why that that was no other up. shed. I don't no think. other shed. So that must be it. Yep. Thanks, Silvio. No, I would have noticed it unless you started questioning. So. <laughs> Else no. Me. Okay, Mark. No question. Silvio. Nope. No question. Bill. Okay. Um, anyone from the audience <laughs> have any questions? No okay. Uh, Thanks, thank Joel. you. Um, and you can't. There's no other land that you could buy to bring this into conformance that you tried. No. In fact, part of the reason why we didn't do a lot of the adjustments at the end was because we only did it because of the Ma'am, just speak into the microphone. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, it's okay. Um, so that's really the only feasible way to do it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, motion to close? So, so moved. Second. Second. Seconded by Bill. All right. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. 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 All right, and the last application tonight, number five, is uh, Ronnie Bashir's for variation section 156.15, seeking permission to construct a freestanding garage. Property is located at 537 Beach Road, Mahopak, New York, 10541. Tax map 64.12-1-11. And Joel representing? Joel Greenberg, the architect, yeah. 2 Muscle Road North, Mahopak, New York. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I did. Thank you, sir. Bring us through. Okay, uh, as you can see from the, yeah, let me move this over. Uh, from the map that I've shown here, uh, <laughs> and if you get out to the property, as you can see, the existing driveway, the existing dr uh, driveway and goes down very, very steeply. Uh, the septic system is in the front, the well is down in the back. <coughs> so really the only place for a, for a small garage, and as you can see, we've tried to keep, in, uh, keep things uh, design-wise with the house, with the same type of siding. It's a small, a small two-car garage. Uh, there's nothing, there's no houses over here. The further, further down, as you can see from the tax map, this is a huge lot that's next door over here. Uh, the house on the corner over here is totally on the other side of the property. Uh, and uh, Park Hill Road just uh, carries down to a, to a dead end over here. Uh, we've, my clients have spoken to the neighbors. They had no uh, objection to any of this. Uh, again, uh, a small garage. If you've been to the property, this section of the property is extremely steep and would be very difficult to, uh, to maintain and put a driveway down such a steep uh, slope. So we thought this was the best location. It's sort of tucked away in the corner of the property. Uh, the street itself, Park Hill Road, is, as you can see, the right-of-way and the paved section of it is quite far from the, uh, from the proposed garage. But these are the property lines, and uh, we need a front yard uh, and a small side yard variance. So this was an old bungalow house, like indicative. Actually, of believe it or not, uh, Mrs. Bashir, this was her parents' house back in, I think, it was the 1940s. There was no garage, no existing garage. No, no. Um, Didn't have many cars back no then. No cars. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, it came by train, Horses. right? Uh, <laughs> yes, you know something? You're train. right. Yep. Yeah. Is there any other property that can be purchased to bring it into conformance? Uh, no. Again, the septic system is here, and yeah. uh, the other properties are all developed. And yet, yeah, it's, it's steep on that side, right? right? Um, okay, any uh, questions from the board? No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions, thank you. Joel, do you foresee any problems with the curve? You know how on the one side, where you, you're going to put it on the side where <coughs> Park Hill is? People coming out, how are they going to enter the garage from Park Hill or Beach? No, no. Uh, the entrance to the garage is going to be from Beach. And as I mentioned before, the actual road uh, of, the, of Park Hill Terrace is quite far from the, uh, uh, from the garage. So any car coming out over here, you have to go to this side over here, the people coming back from either on Beach Road or Park Hill, uh, Park Hill Terrace. And that's a stop sign on Park And it's a stop sign, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Um, this is 
a steep road to Beach Road, so yes. cars are coming up pretty slow from, from there. Okay. <coughs> um, there's, there's really no gutter detail on that, but the runoff off the roof, wh where, where is that going? Can you point where that's going, Joe, for me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there is, again, the bridge goes perpendicular to Beach Road, and the uh, runoff on, from the gutters on either side will go into a swale that is located along the property line on the westerly side. So it will not, it will not infringe upon anything. Yeah, um, I know the, uh, you know, between those properties, because I'm familiar with that, that one little section, is a, there's a flowing stream there that runs down to the lake, but is there a... Uh, is there certain details with, uh, you know, capturing the runoff there before it, it, it hits the, uh, the, uh, the property? Well, I mean, we can discuss that when we get our permit and we can, what we can do to uh, take care of the situation you're talking about is to have a uh, sort of like a stop cap with either, either a gallery or some kind of uh, leaching that's, basin. But that's a, a wet, is that like considered a wetland there? Oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's area's on that, all high. On that, that's uh, all high. On the, between the property between the properties? Really? Yes. <coughs> not to my knowledge, no. No, it's like a natural brook that, that's a up brook. there. But, yeah. but a I brook get what you're saying, there. so it's not washing directly into the stream. There probably should be a catch pit, a yeah, catch well, basin of what some What we'll sort do is, is part of a submission to the building department, <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> capturing so that the water will so, yeah. actually be able to be dissipated onto the property. Yeah. Okay. It's a check. Yeah, as a check, absolutely. Check dam. Okay. No problem. All right, so we can condition that. I mean, it's yeah, really if it's within 100 feet of a wetland, it's going to go to the ECB also. Okay. Yeah. So that'll, yeah, yeah. that'll be part of the submission then. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Okay. Um, I asked you if there's no other property, right, that you can purchase. So, um, <coughs> any input from the public on this application? Uh, I guess not. Um, all right, I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. So I second. Second. Go ahead, Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, you guys want to take a break and go straight through. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> enjoy your Let's Memorial Day weekend. Keep it safe. You Stay too. tuned, Joel. Thanks, Joel. All right, at this point, there's no public input on any application as we adjudicate. Let's go through them. All right, uh, on number one, on Milliker, I'll look for a motion. Motion to grant. Do I have a second? Any conditions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, granted. Uh, number two, Ubertus. Motion to grant. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Granted. All right, number three, Balzo. Look for a motion. Motion to grant. By Rose. Seconded. Second. By Silvio. Silvio. Yep. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, granted. Do you want me to do that? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, motion, motion on number four, application of Horowitz. Motion, motion to, to grant. grant. By Bill, and my second. Second. Second by Rose. All in favor? Aye. 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 And um, number one five. Abstention. Oh, sorry. One abstention, John. Oh yes, and I abstain. Um, <coughs> number five, Ronnie Bashirs. <coughs> look for a motion. Motion to grant. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, granted. All right, minutes from uh, April 2019. I need to abstain. I wasn't present. Yeah. Neither right. was I. Okay. Motion to grant. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a safe, happy, and healthy holiday weekend and um, take care of our veterans out there. Happy Memorial Day. You too.